Right then, today we have my uh, Asus P45 board, uh, which I'll be modding my Xeon for. My stickers have arrived, so I'll be showing that in a minute. I've got my Crucial Ballistics Tracer memory in there, uh, with its very nice lights on it. 8400GS power in the monitor, um, CPU cooler, obviously, rubber band holding the fan on. I have a Samsung 840, not an Evo, not a Pro, just a standard 840, 120 gig there. Uh, currently in the BIOS with an E6400, I think it is. Um, as you can see, it's 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, nothing too interesting. I will boot up. It shouldn't be too long, as this is booting off... Uh, the SSD, as you can see the memory lights up quite nicely, it's got some like blue lights underneath it and then these lights come on on top and flash and do all sorts of things depending on what load it's under. Another nice feature uh, of this board is the onboard uh, reset and power switch, they're really nice. Especially when I'm on a test bench like this, although this is on the floor again. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. Hopefully my Xeon will work in this board. P45 is one of the better chipsets uh, for doing the Xeon 771 uh, Xeon conversions on. Uh, X48 and X38 can be a bit temperamental. You can see the, the, the lighting on the RAM's really going there. Uh, right, we are in Windows. As you can see, it's all working right now. Pretty uh, quick to boot up. The actual post time of the computer is the longest part, really. CPU-Z always takes a while to open. I don't know why, but CPU-Z doesn't really like this motherboard, so sometimes it gets some errors, but as you can see, E4600, stock clocks, nothing crazy, it was at 284 when I booted, because that's probably the settings I was using last. So, I'll try and get this Xeon in then. I'll film putting the sticker uh, on the Xeon now. Right then, this is the Xeon I will be doing as you can see it is a X5450 that I bought about a week ago now here I've got the little stickers to uh, jump the pins over uh, I also got these stickers which came with the, uh, the other stickers as well now I'm gonna just bring up the guide here on the computer screen. This is on the Linus Tech Tips forum in the guides and tutorials section. There we go. Actually, I want page one. Well, oh, look at me. Right, so. These are the pins here that I want to change over across those. I have to put the sticker in the right place as well. So, you can see the triangle on the picture on the screen it was pointing that way, and we're going to be putting them the sticker down here. Now, the sticker has these little adhesive tabs, these white tabs, either end, which you'll uh, have to peel off. So I'm going to do that now. Done one end. Now I'll do the other end. It's that white bit there. And as you can see, Those two pins there, oops, 
when it focuses are swapped over. Now, this little symbol at the top here wants to be uh, that way up, so gold side up and towards this side of the processor and it's gonna line up on the second line in All right, let's see if I can do this here Right, you can see there, it's on the sort of second line in, I haven't put that on quite straight, so I'll probably redo that. Right, as you can see now, I've just moved it slightly so it's in a better position. You can see that the gold uh, triangle in the corner of the sticker matches up with the gold triangle on the CPU. And also this symbol at the top, the little line halfway down that, points towards the corner of the triangle as well. Now this should go straight into the uh, socket, which I modded the other day now. Uh, I shouldn't need to do any BIOS mods to my motherboard. I should just put it straight in and it should work. As you can see, 3 gigahertz. Hopefully it works. Right, as you can see, the Xeon is in the socket there. Hopefully the correct way around, otherwise I'm an idiot. Right, I'll put the lid down, close her up. I'll put the uh, heat sink on, and then hopefully it'll work. So, Xeon is in, the cooler is on. Uh, I haven't actually turned it on yet, so I'm going to risk it and uh, not follow Sod's law, hopefully, and turn it on. Hopefully it will boot. Fans going. Memory's on. Screen's on. New CPU's installed. And here we are in the BIOS. Now let's see what CPU we have in there. Well, it's running nice and cool. 25 degrees Celsius. There we go. Intel Xeon. X5450, 3 gigahertz. It is running at the full 3 gigahertz. I'm going to put an automatic ratio on up to the highest it will go, which is 9. Um, and then uh, I'm just going to see. I'm going to put that on manual. So it's got a 333 megahertz front side bus stock. So we'll see what she boots up at. Hopefully it'll boot up at this, which is stock settings. I'm not entirely sure what voltage it's running at, but we will see in Windows. So it looks like my sticker mod was successful, which is good. Whew. Can't say I wasn't nervous for that. It's the first one I've ever done. First time I've ever modded a CPU socket as well. So I'm quite pleased with that result. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but the uh, the fan isn't being held on by the rubber band anymore, and that is because it's snapped, so it's currently being held on by magic and uh, witchcraft, uh, which is good. You can see the nice RAM there, it's light. I really like the look of this RAM, a lot more than my G-Skill Pi, but unfortunately the G-Skill Pi is a lot better at uh, overclocking. And these lights mo uh, look much better in person than they do on the camera as well. They're all like washed out on the camera for some reason, but you can see them going there. They look very nice. Right, she's booted into Windows, which is good. Restart, because it's a uh, 
new CPU installed, I'll come back when it's booted up with a CPU Z and a uh, Cinebench run of this new CPU. So, as you can see in CPU Z here, it's running at just under 1.1 volts, which is stock voltage because all of them are still on auto, at 3 GHz, which is excellent. I'm really pleased with this chip. Uh, it should do about the same, maybe a little bit better. Uh, then my uh, Q uh, Core 2 Quad Q9650 which I've got it is saying that it is an E um, for 5450 in CPU Z but it is an X as it says here in Cinebench so it's stock clocks so uh, I'm just going to run uh, Cinebench quickly here, I haven't optimised it or anything. I'm just going to run the multi-thread CPU test so you can see how fast one of these is stock. Um, you'll probably find that it's quite similar to the uh, AMD FM2 uh, quad-core CPUs in terms of performance uh, at stock. Might need a little bit of an overclock to keep up, but this is generally a pretty fast CPU. I've had my uh, Q6950 up to 4.4 gigahertz, just over 4.4 gigahertz, and it was faster than my uh, FX uh, 4170 and 4100 as well, and it was also a bit faster than uh, my APU as well, which is really good. Quad core Athlons as well, they, they perform similar, but obviously this platform's running uh, DDR2. And as you can see, the lighting on the top of the memory is going crazy while running Cinebench, and it does actually look really nice. Like I said before, it looks a hell of a lot better in person. It's a, it's a real shame. It doesn't come out better on the camera, to be honest. And it lights up the, uh, the motherboard down here nicely as well. So as you can see, it's quite a way through Cinebench already. It's done over half of it. And again, this is at completely stock clocks. You can see here, uh, I've got a few other scores. Um, now then, where's it? There, you can see my Core 2 Quad, what that can score. At just over 4.4 gigahertz, which is quite fast. Um, it's not 24-7 stable at that, obviously. And you can see there's a quad-core Athlon there. Um, at 4.16 gigahertz granted see what the fastest score with that was about 340 um, can see a uh, a uh, Q8300 there 245 at stock clocks this has just finished the benchmark and this one has managed to do 321 and if we look on this score chart here I'll give you a good idea of how fast it is. Look, there we go. Stock, which is three gigahertz, it's faster than Athlon at four gigahertz, which is very impressive for a CPU this old. Uh, it's slightly slower than my Q6950. Uh, 9650, rather, um, at the same speed, but that's probably because I've got the slower ramming. So. I'll be overclocking this on both uh, air cooling first probably just to see how well it scales on voltage a bit um, and then I'll also overclock it eventually on my phase cooler which I've actually got open today don't know whether you can see in there because it's quite dark um, that is the condenser there that is the rotary pump which is slightly better than the piston type of pump as you can see it's quite large and I've also got a large um, fan sucking the air out of the back there extracting it so that it can go out of the window hopefully not back into my room because this thing produces a hell of, hell of a lot of heat um, so there you go that's a bit of a look at my phase cooler as well there's uh, the electronics for all of the internals and stuff it's got two fans I think they're about 100 watts each, these fans, and they make a lot more noise and move a fair bit more air than a Delta fan. So, uh, <laughs> but obviously they're a lot larger and it's very loud when I turn it on as well. So, 
that has been uh, my new modified uh, 775 Xeon and a bit of bonus footage there from uh, the phase cooler as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, please post on the Linus Tech Tips forum if you have any questions on this mod as the thread is, is currently very active. There's a lot of people still running 775 CPUs and boards and also the great if you want to start overclocking as well as you can pick up second hand boards and CPUs for fairly reasonable prices these days and there's plenty to choose from because you can overclock them on the front side bus so you can overclock locked chips like this one unlike the uh, newer Intel Pentium um, CPUs because you can only uh, overclock the K versions of those so you only have a choice between like a, a Pentium an i5 and an i7 which is not very good really whereas with these you can overclock a Celeron Pentium dual core all the way up to a core 2 quad uh, and they're quite fun to overclock as well with them having a north bridge overclocking you can do all sorts of ram overclocking and ram timings as well um, not that you can't on uh, the other ones but because you're using the front side bus and the base clock you get a lot more variance with the ram and the speed and also the north bridge and uh, stuff like that adds different aspects to it so I hope you found this video interesting like I said post on the Linus Tech Tips forum if you have any questions or problems you can also uh, put any questions in the YouTube comments as well because I will be uh, checking those uh, thanks for watching see ya